Well, Ghostbusters is finally here. And unfortunately, this was one of the most hated trailers in YouTube history. I mean, this movie was just absolutely crapped on before the movie came out. But what did I think about it? Well, I'm Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Ghostbusters is such a famous franchise. I remember this franchise when I was a little boy, Ghostbusters 1, Ghostbusters 2, and I loved the animated cartoon that they had on TV. I mean, when I found out that Sony was going to make a Ghostbusters movie, I was happy, but at the same time, I was a little sad and a little scared because I knew that Sony Pictures was going to be behind it. And so for me, that studio is just fell off the Richter completely all the way. They are completely stale to me and really just don't have any creativity left in their pipeline. Now, when the first trailer first came out, I watched it. I went in with an open mind and I liked it. I liked it a lot. As soon as I saw that first trailer and they hit you with that old school theme Ghostbusters song, I was on board. I was excited. I remember myself passing the trailer and sharing it online and social media to all my friends like, hey, y'all, look, they're coming out with a Ghostbusters movie. We knew it was coming. All female. It looks pretty good. And it felt like I was the only person in the world that felt that way. Everybody was crapping on it. Every, at first, everybody was, everyone was upset because it was an all female cast, which I'm not going to lie. I will be honest with you, I did want this cast to be all male just because that's what I'm used to. But that's just when the news first came out. But when I first saw the trailer, I didn't mind. I was just kind of thinking to myself, okay, hey, these are four strong women and they're about to go kick some ghosts' ass. I love the cast. I love Lacey Jones. She's fun to me. I love Melissa McCarthy. And I also love Kristen Wiig. But this other character by the name of Kate, McKinnon and I'm not too familiar with her work at all. Um, I could have looked it up, but I didn't. I don't remember seeing her in any other films before, but she's in this movie too. But like I said, I was looking forward to it. It looked good, but the entire world was just three, two, a billion thumbs down, just saying it looks like crap. Every negative thing you can possibly think of, people are saying about this movie. And it really sucked because it hasn't even come out yet or at the time. But this movie is directed by Paul Feig. Um, if you know Paul Feig, he did a lot of TV back in the day, late uh, 90s, early 2000s. But he really hit a home run with Bridemaids. That movie was hilarious to me. It is one of the funniest comedies of all time, in my opinion. I put it right up there, neck and neck, with The Hangover. I mean, like I, people call Bridesmaids the female version of The Hangover. I don't necessarily have to put that same label on it myself, but it is one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. I was crying laughing, and so that is the same director that is behind Ghostbusters. Now, Paul Feig also did The Heat, with Melissa McCarthy and Sandra Bullock, and also they're coming out with The Heat 2, and he also did Spy, another film starring Melissa McCarthy. So you can kind of tell that they have an interesting relationship here in Hollywood behind and in front of the camera because the director is also a sometimes actor too. And it's surprising that so much people will want to shit on this film. I mean, it's just Ghostbusters here. I mean, that's a great property. That's a great franchise. And then you have a great director over here, which is Paul Feig. But then you have also a great cast, except for that new girl, Kate, which I'm not too familiar with myself. I mean, what could go wrong? Why are people so upset? It's starting to make, I'm starting to feel that people are just happy when they're hating on something. I mean, I don't know. I just don't get it. I try not to look at internet trolls in the comment sections too much because they can't get you riled up. But I really just wasn't understanding why no one else was on board with this movie. But anyway, I went in with an open mind. Um, the early reviews came out late last week, and those are positive. I didn't look at any of them. I didn't even look at Rotten Tomatoes. I was just looking to see. I know I just wanted to see if the movie was good for myself. I didn't want to look at any more trailers, TV spots, anything like that. So I'm watching the movie and things are starting out great. And then they trying to hit you with that old school Ghostbusters theme song. And you're in the mood. You're vibing. You're bobbing your head and tapping your feet. And you're leaning forward because you're engaged. And as I'm watching the movie, 
I mean, I'm enjoying every moment of it. And the first thing that stood out to me was I really felt like I was in the world that they were trying to make me believe was real. And I also really liked the way all the characters interacted in the beginning, the way they introduced each other. That worked very well. It felt very realistic. If I, I you know, if I, like I say, a movie is good to me. If I could put myself in those people's shoes and we're thinking the same, you know, I don't want to see a character on screen not doing what they're supposed to be doing or saying what they're supposed to be saying based off the search situation they're in. And they nail that to a T. And with every film, the first thing that is very important that you have to do is set the tone. You have to also set the rules of the universe that we're in. And I thought the film did a great job there. But then we started meeting the cast. We start first start meeting Kristen Wiig and the start. We start meeting Melissa McCarthy. And when we first start seeing, and I'm calling these characters by their real name. And the reason why is I'll go ahead and tell you this now is, and this is possibly one of the one or two gripes that I have about the overall film is I did not feel that the cast was actual characters. I felt that they were just playing themselves or the same characters that they played themselves in all other movies, but that's not a knock because I like when they play themselves in other movies or that same typical role and that worked here. You may have changed it slightly a little bit with their hair and makeup and the costumes that they were wearing, but I did feel that these were not actually characters, that these were actually the real actors just and costumes calling each other fake names. That's not a knock like I said, it worked, but that's why I'm using the real names. But when you go to Kristen Wiig, I liked her. Uh, she was funny, she was genuine, she felt like a real person. She had a nice backstory. It's, we're watching this movie in present day, and you they set up very briefly um, some scenes that delved into her past just to let you know where she came from. And the way that she had a previous relationship with Melissa McCarthy's character was priceless. And then we meet that character. Melissa McCarthy, she was probably my favorite character in this whole film because she truly did not give a damn and she just really wanted to embrace who she was. She had a strong passion about something and it didn't matter what it was. She was passionate about it. She was the type of person that was going to wake up five in the morning and go to bed at 4 a.m. in the morning and only have an hour of sleep just to give 100% to whatever she believed in. And she did not care about anybody else or what anyone else thought about her or what her beliefs were. She was just doing her own thing and I loved everything about her as far as that's concerned. Now the new character, Kate McKinnon, which her name was Jillian Holtzman in the movie. Like I said, I've never seen her before in anything but I liked her a lot too. Um, she was on the same level as Melissa McCarthy, just embracing who she really was, not caring about anything. She was the techie in this group when they needed new devices, when they needed new hardware and technology. She was one of the characters that was in the laboratory during all the tinkering with all the tools to give the team their gear. So she did have a purpose in this film. And if I did mention Kristen Wiig's purpose of the film, you know, she was one of the, she was another form of brains and Melissa McCarthy. She was the engineer type as well. Now, the last character that comes into the fold was Leslie Jones. And initially, I'm not going to lie. When I first started seeing the trailers for this, I kind of thought that her wall was stereotypical. She's pulling up in the hearse. I'm like, hey, we got a car. It's a Cadillac, you know, screaming and whatnot. And you know that that can be considered a stereotype in the African-American community. But I still wanted to go in with the uh, end and try to give her character a chance. And even though initially she was coming off very stereotypical, like just a dumb person that's loud and screams all the time. And that's what a lot of people are commenting about in the comment section with the initial trailers. When she's like, the cry get come out of my friend, ghost and slapping and the, the Christ compelled and slapping. 
She just was screaming her lines and some people were complaining about that. And that was one concern that I had going in. But I'm glad to say that they did give her character something to do other than scream and be a, a loud black lady. I did like her contributions in the film. The next thing I loved about the movie was just the story and how everything flowed. It didn't waste any time. Like I said, the very beginning of this film, they had to set the tone and they set a great job of putting the tone together. I mean, we get some people... And then they just start throwing, they have a ghost out there. Okay, wait, what's going on? People are running scared. That's what they're supposed to do. And the Ghostbusters, they're in. They're in there. And I like the way that they were infused in there immediately. I mean, it didn't waste any time. If I was in those same character shoes, I would have been doing the exact same thing. And that just gives me, that just pulls me into the story that's already on screen. And that makes me a be more attached to the characters that are part of the story as well. So I was loving that. Every word of dialogue felt real. Every p sentence, every paragraph, every body language, gesture, mannerism was real. And I could relate to it. I would have been doing the exact same things that all these characters was doing. There was never a time where I was like, okay, why did you do that? Why didn't you do this? Who told you to go over there and what are you doing? No, it was nothing like that. I mean, I actually felt like a Ghostbuster in the way because I was like, okay, we need, if, if this is the problem right here, here's the solution. And then two seconds later, someone would be saying that exact line in the movie. And I'm like, yeah, okay, we're on board. We got some smart characters here. But then when the team comes together, I was just loving it because I mean, just see this, just think about it. Okay. Think about it. If there was some people going around talking about there's some ghosts running around in the town and that you actually heard a real story about some freaking ghostbusters you would think they were crazy especially if they was not embarrassed about it they embraced it and they just went into the building running with their proton packs ready to bust some ghosts ass you i mean that's what you would think but what makes the character so great is that's exactly how the movie was set up and they didn't care what anyone thought. They didn't care how they were portrayed in the media. I mean, they care, but at the same time, even if they were made fun of and ridiculed, they were still going to do their own thing. And I'm like, hell yeah, that's how you're supposed to live life. You're not supposed to give an F what nobody thinks and do what makes you happy. Do what you are passionate about. And that's what all the Ghostbusters was doing in this movie and it just made me love it even more and more and more and even another great thing about this movie is it's funny i mean it's hilarious funny funny from the very beginning until the very end i mean you have jokes where you know they're trying to be jokes and then you have just natural jokes where no one is laughing just someone can be doing something odd over here and just saying someone's facial expression like you know what is going on and what makes it funny is this with all the characters you have different versions of weird like this like person a can be weird and person b can be weird but their weirdness is so vast that they both are looking at each other like okay this person's a weirdo and this person's a weirdo and i'm the audience back here just looking at hey both you guys are weirdos and when those characters are playing off each other it's just so funny hey i mean you have no choice but to laugh i mean even if a joke wasn't funny, it was still funny because the way they were trying to make the joke. And it's like you knew that they knew the joke wasn't funny, but you were laughing because they tried it anyway. I mean, it was just so many different forms of laughter and comedy. And I really appreciated all of it. Now, for a while there, I was just talking about the stuff that I like. I'll just take a pause and talk about some of the stuff that I didn't like. And some of the things that I didn't like is when the ghosts were prominent and running around town, running amok towards the end of the film, at times, as far as their stakes was concerned, if the ghosts were actually a threat, you didn't really know. That was not really consistent. I mean, as you see in the trailer, sometimes these ghosts are taking or possessing people and making them do whatever they want. So one of the questions that I had, and this is a gripe, is if you see Ghostbusters are killing your fellow ghost members, why don't you just go and possess one of the Ghostbusters and make them run over here into a wall and make them run over here or make them destroy their gun? I mean, that was a complaint of mine, but overall, I was still, I mean, the movie is so much fun that even though you're watching it and you think that towards the end, you really don't care. You wish they could have fixed it, but you're still like, okay, hey, I had a whole so much fun all the way up to this point. The action is still great and there are some stakes, but it is still a bit inconsistent. 
And also another grab that I had is the Kate McKinnon character, Jillian Holtzman. She was one of the engineers that was making all the techs, all the technology and upgrading their gear with their proton packs and all that good stuff. But it seems like she was just pulling new devices out her left pocket, left and right, left and right. I mean, every other scene she has, hey, I got some new toys here. And while they're cool and I like the way they work in the movie, I was saying to myself, okay, when did you have time to make this? I mean, this type of thing takes time. I mean, you're making proton packs and, and grenades to, to destroy ghosts and containment devices and this and that and, and, and proton gloves and stuff. I mean, there's no way you can make this in 24 hours, especially if you didn't have any money. I mean, early in the movie, y'all was saying that you didn't have any money to buy a car and you had to get Leslie Jones character to get you let her uncle uh, let you guys borrow it but then all of a sudden you got all the money in the world to make all these different devices i did kind of think of that in the movie but like i said that's just a small gripe but the action is fun some people make complain about the cgi ghosts that's just, that wasn't a problem for me i mean this was supposed to be a fun not take it too seriously uh remake of an old classic now, a lot of people may be holding on to all the nostalgic value and all that good stuff, but for me, it may not hit every mark there, but I was still proud and I was still having fun. And when the action came in at the end, it was fun. Even though the stakes were a little inconsistent here and there, there was this one little scene to where it was just one-on-one -on -one with one of the Ghostbusters and Ghosts. They slowed the music. They slowed the frames down, turned the music up. She whipped out her guns and she just went to town on those Ghosts to where the whole audience was applauding after that routine and I you know I, I was like yeah that was pretty badass it was a little silly over the top and not necessary but it was still fun and I loved it another great thing that this movie did was all the cameos that they had to have in the film from the past films and as you know unfortunately one of the Ghostbusters is, is not here with us anymore he passed from the silence but for the cameos that they did have in the movie I loved all of them I mean, every time somebody was coming on screen and you didn't know where they were coming from, I was clapping. Everybody was happy and they were all throughout the film. But guys, overall, I went into this film with mediocre to low expectations and I came out loving this film. It was a lot of fun. It was a blast. I really don't, I, I, I really will find it hard to believe if anybody can walk out of this movie saying that they didn't like it. They may walk out saying that they didn't love it, but I really, really did like it. This is actually something that I will go see in the theater a second time, maybe with a different state of mind, not by myself, but if I had a friend or if I was going out on a date or something and that person um, hasn't seen the film, you know, I, hey, you know, we can, we can go see it. It was real good. This is something that I will be buying on Blu-ray to add into the collection. I really did enjoy the film. I'm not being a hater. It was a great film. I really did enjoy it. Everybody that was shitting on this movie in the comment section, I think you owe the cast and the director an apology and the studio for giving them such a hard time and complaining for no reason when you're judging a book by its cover. But now the great time, guys, the fun time. It's time to rate this thing. If I were to rate... Ghostbusters out of a 1 out of 10 I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10 yes an 8.5 out of 10 but guys that's just my opinion just because I liked it doesn't mean that you will like it and vice versa so have you seen Ghostbusters do you want to see it have I turned you on have I turned you off do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you become one of my subscribers and get all the content that I have to provide in the past and in the future. Also, if you would like a written review of this, you can head over to the site it's right there. Look at the bottom of the screen and the link is also in the description box. And if you're also into, into social media, which I'm sure you are, you can find me at Instagram and Twitter at JustMyOpinion84. Also, guys, don't forget to share the video. But thank you guys for tuning in for my opinion slash review for Ghostbusters. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.